As I've gone through the years as a woodland photographer, I've experienced periods where I've just lacked inspiration, but also moments when I've started to see things differently and my interpretation of the places that I love has begun to change, even if only ever so slightly. Now that change might be triggered by a particular image, by a conversation with a fellow photographer, but quite often it's something that has evolved through experience and spending time in the environments that I enjoy the most. That change in how I see the world is typically driven by how I think and how I feel about woodland. I'd like to discuss the concept of poetic photography in woodland. Now, this isn't meant to be a, a convoluted or pretentious way of describing my own images, but is a, a way of thinking that can help to distill the complexity of woodland. Much like the concept that I introduced to you last year where I talked about not looking for trees in woodland photography. I see poetry as a metaphor for our sensitivity to the expressions of trees or the relationships within the scene. A sensitivity that I think can help to facilitate the process of constructing compositions with both meaning and emotion. I think people's definition or what they perceive to be poetry and photography will vary considerably. You know, no doubt my own interpretation of it will change over time, but at present I see poetry and photography as being symbiotic in that the process as a photographer is very much related to poetry in terms of using pattern rhythm and rhyme or repetition within the frame. It was an ancient Roman poet known as Horace who described a picture as a poem without words. And I think we can make reality of that romantic notion through a careful working of detail by being attentive to important photographic as aspects such as light, emotion and narrative, but then also qualities such as shape, colour and texture. And as photographers, we can piece together these components through the principles of composition, but then also using an empathetic approach so we can end up with a more metered result, but with meaning and emotion rather than just something that's descriptive. Going back to the idea of rhythm and repetition, here's an image of an oak woodland in late August, which I titled Rhythm. On the face of it, it's simply a visually pleasing photograph of trees in atmospheric conditions. However, the sensitivity to the relationships becomes more apparent as we start to explore the image. One of the many things that fascinates me in Woodland is the sense of an interconnected community and the complementary forms that develop over many years. There's often symmetry, repetition of form and a flow that's been dictated by the environment. Recognising these relationships helps to distill the chaos and create rhythm and poetry in shapes. With careful positioning, we can follow twists and turns of the branches and wind our way through the image. One branch merges into a branch on another tree, creating a characterful network. You can loosely see repetition too with groups of three. A definition of poetry is an expression of feelings and ideas that are given intensity through a distinctive style and rhythm, or it's an imaginatively and sensitively emotional style of expression. Now, the key thing here is that we're not trying to force our own ideas of rhythm and repetition or a metaphorical idea onto a woodland scene, but instead being receptive to the qualities that, exi that exist within a particular location and helping that to guide our visual interpretation of it. Here's another example of careful positioning to play with this idea of connected branches working as a network within woodland offering flow, and I guess you could call it harmony within complexity. It's fairly interesting because there's a fairly high degree of precision in the positioning to offer connectivity, but also framing of the central oak tree. And there's also the technical aspect of photography. But I believe that you can have precision in composition and technique, but still capture that feeling of the poetic qualities of nature. I began by talking about poetry being this metaphor for demonstrating our sensitivity to expressions and relationships, but how can we possibly put this into practice? Well, I've, I've referred to it before as being this silent conversation with the subject matter. You know, a bit like trying to solve a problem with a friend. We can't possibly expect a positive outcome if all we do is talk and not listen. 
Essentially, we're not trying to force an idea, but connecting with the environment to inspire ideas. You know, we're just allowing ourselves the time to tune into a location, to appreciate its nuances, its character, its strengths, its weaknesses, how we feel when we're there, and also allowing that to guide our visual intent. One final example, which is one of my favorite recent images, is a more abstracted take on a weeping birch tree. This particular image I like to think demonstrates attention to detail and a careful separation of the branches which just sprawl out from the base of the image and become increasingly delicate as they reach through the frame. But it also brings me back to the concept of going into woodland and not looking for trees. Yes, this is a photograph of part of a single tree, but the image is about flow, it's about colour, it's about recognising that the delicate draping branches offer this poetic quality of rhythm and balance through light and dark, which almost gives a feeling of falling water, which is why I titled it Cascade. In many ways, the essence of looking poetically at trees is seeing beyond the description of woodland. As I said, this isn't about trying to label a particular image as poetic, but to open up this idea or way of thinking which encourages us to spend a little bit more time to understand the subject matter, and take a considered approach which gives a result which is metered, but with meaning. But that, that meaning has to come from within us and reflect how we see the world, our own narrative if you like. We all want to create images which we love, but that quite often starts with making images of the things which we genuinely care about. Demonstrate your unique connection to nature and you'll probably find that others will care about your images too. Now, this is just an idea that I started to play with earlier this year. So in photographic terms, it's very much in its infancy, but hopefully it will inspire some ideas for you too. Now I'm going to leave you with my friend, Sarah Tucker, who's going to read a poem that she's written very kindly just for us. Mist lurks on fresh ground rising softly with first light. I'm in the home of silent giants. Moss covered and ancient, they have twisted and turned in their dance with time. I seek out their company at the edges of the days. This green and glowing kingdom permits me. This pocket of the world is theirs, and I step into it daily to watch, to listen. Gentle neighbors, they know each other well. They have grown together. Roots and branches navigate shared space. They bend and bow to one another. I grow and straighten in their presence. I am stilled in their silence. These shaggy ancients color the seasons, give a voice to the wind and a sanctuary to the soul. Finally, I'd like to thank you all very much for your support over the past year, for every like and comment, for every print purchase and workshop. Also, some people have made a donation via my website uh, just to help to support this channel and the work that goes into it. So as a thank you, I'm going to pick a donor at random and send them the first edition of this print or a variation of this, which is the Cascade image. Um, so I'll be in touch with the winner of that very soon via email and I think this is something that I'll do at the end of each year and just pick a donor at random who has supported the channel during that time. Um, but yeah, thank you all very much again. Um, wishing you all the very best for the new year, which will hopefully turn out to be a much more positive year for all of us. Mm -hmm.